assuming everybody can hear me, uh, this is the Monday, July 12th Conservation Commission meeting in the town of Norton for uh, beginning at uh, uh, approximately 6.30 p.m. And because this is a remote uh, participation meeting conducted by Zoom, we're obligated to read the preamble, uh, which I'll begin now. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order superseding certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, paragraph 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting in Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. Members of the public attending this public hearing slash meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so. During the portion of the hearing designated for public comment by raising their hand virtually, or pressing star six if participating by phone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Norton cable website script or other comprehensive record of the proceeding as soon as possible after the meeting. Um, the we have of course our conservation director Jennifer Carlino participating, uh, members participating are myself, Julian Kadish, Ron O'Reilly, Lisa Carosa, Dan Pearson, Jean Blood, and we have multiple members of the public as well as Norton Media Center recording the um, proceedings. Our first item um, is, uh, uh, let's see, a discussion with Jesse Knowlton. Um, I think we're going to table reorganization of the commission till later in the meeting. I assume that's acceptable. Uh, and then uh, we come to a discussion concerning the uh, project, uh, conservation project proposal on conservation uh, property. And uh, we have a representative of that discussion, looks like we do. You're on mute currently, if you want to just get yourself off mute. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jesse, welcome. We're excited to hear about your project. Oh, thank you. Um, so thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm Jesse Knowlton. I'm a relatively new professor at Wheaton College. I don't know if you all knew John Kreitcher. Um, he was a professor for a long time at Wheaton. And I'm his uh, replacement, you could say, after he retired. So. I've been at Wheaton for four years now, um, and I'm an ecologist. I primarily study birds, especially tropical birds in Latin America, um, but I'm branching out and I've always been really interested in insect communities and the impacts of human alteration of habitat on biodiversity of both birds and insects. Um, and so my proposal for my students and I, and I have one student in attendance, I think Erin uh, Ortega, hello. Um, so I'm working with five Wheaton students this summer and we wanted to do some basic preliminary surveys of the pollinator communities on Norton Conservation Commission land. And also we're very interested in the impact of invasive praying mantises on the native arthropod communities. Um, not sure if you're aware, but the Chinese mantis in particular 
is invasive in our region and their abundance is quite high. Um, the, the eggs hatch in June and right now we have a bunch of nymphs out that are about an inch long. Um, and then of course they grow up and they get larger, they get pretty large, um, up to like six inches long in August and September. They lay their eggs in late September, early October, and then the adults die and the eggs are able to overwinter and then the young emerge the following summer. Um, so that's kind of the reason that we're starting later in the summer um, is that you know, July is the time of year when you can find the nymphs and then the adults a little bit later in the summer. But these mantises are quite generalist predators. So they're kind of like the equivalent of our native wolf spiders. They eat pretty much anything that they can fit in their mouths. Um, so they're sort of sit and wait predators. They they like to hang out in open meadows where there's a lot of pollinators. So the native bees that we have and butterflies. Um, and they will just grab whatever they can, but we're not exactly sure, you know, what if they're kind of targeting a specific type of prey or what kind of impact they're having on our native bees. And of course we know that native bees are really important pollinators, not only for a lot of our native plants, but also crops as well. So most people are familiar with European honeybees. Um, a lot of people are not even aware that, you know, these honeybees are introduced, so they're not native to the Americas. Um, and we actually have like hundreds in the US, hundreds of native bee species, many of which we don't really notice because they're so tiny, um, but they're really important for our ecosystem as well and for pollinating specific species of plants. So we want to find out what impact these praying mantises are having on the native pollinator community. And to do that, we are proposing that we collect the mantises and we dissect them in the lab. Um, and then we send their guts basically to a colleague of mine at UC Riverside. She uses DNA barcoding methods to determine exactly what they've been eating. So she's able to just use tiny fragments of DNA left over in their guts um, to determine, you know, what species of insect or spider. Um, the bigger mantises will even eat small reptiles and amphibians. Um, and in some places, large mantises will eat hummingbirds. So, you know, they really have a, a varied diet. So we wanted to really, um, you know, figure out what they're eating and their impact. So we're, we're proposing to collect the mantises and then also to do some bee surveys. And for the bee surveys, we would go out and walk transects and catch bees that are on flowers um, and write down exactly what flowers the bees were caught on and um, and then we identify the bee species. A lot of them, as I said, are very small and you kind of need to use a micro, you know, at least a dissecting scope to figure out what species they are. Um, for the larger bumblebees and the honeybees and carpenter bees, we don't need to collect them. We can just say exactly, you know, what species they are in the field. Um, but the smaller ones we were planning to collect and uh, and then, so we have an idea of what our native bee community in Norton looks like and, um, you know, whether there's any relationship between areas that have a high density of praying mantis and uh, the bee community, whether it's more impoverished or not. Uh, so that was just sort of our, you know, this is sort of our first foray into this type of research. Um, so that was just our sort of preliminary plan for, for the summer. So, yeah, I think it sounds fascinating. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we are, 
we're very happy to uh, present our results and with photos and you know a nicer presentation than just me talking to you um, at you know when we have when we have those results at the end of the summer. Yeah. So if we have them at the end of the summer. I'll also mention that Mass Association of Conservation Commissions has their annual meeting in March, typically oh. at the beginning of March, end of February, um, and they have started poster presentations, and there's um, uh, awards that go with it. So if those students are still there in the spring, you may want to consider uh, entering the poster competition. Oh, definitely. That would be really, really good for them and us. Yeah, and I, I have to say we won't have all the results by the end of the summer, but at least we'll have, you know, but maybe by March we will. So that would be the results of the DNA analysis. All right. It sounds like this species of praying mantis is as bad as humans. So, <laughs> I don't know um, if anything's that bad, but it's like, you know. well, okay. So Jen, is this, I mean, do we actually have to make a motion to say we're okay with this study or? I would be happy to make that motion uh, if uh, this is, uh, sounds like an excellent project. This is some good news on, a, on an otherwise sad day. So I just have a quick question. So are you working with Jennifer to select the locations? I haven't been told. Yeah, I, I've been using your online uh, information about each site, you know, that, that the Norton Conservation Commission owns. And last week, my students and I were visiting each site to kind of see, uh, you know, which ones had some open open areas that, that would be good. Okay. We have two other locations that aren't in that pamphlet, and one of them would really be um, fantastic. Oh. So I'll have to send you that. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. All right. We're, we're, it's not clear we need a motion, but we'll we'll go through the motion. So, uh, motion by Dick Pearson. I'll second. And seconded by Jean. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Start with uh, Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an I, so um, uh, you can finalize your locations and enjoy. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate this. It's, it's going to be fun, and we look forward to, to staying in communication and working with you. Great. Well, uh, wear your mosquito repellent because West Nile virus has come to town, and we, yeah. we and have is, Not to mention deer ticks. Uh, yeah. yeah. and. It's been so wet that we can anticipate it's really going to be a, uh, a bone year for mosquitoes. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, I think we're now ready to move on to our first. Thank you for uh, coming hearing. in. Good luck. Thank you all very much. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, next item on the agenda is request for determination of applicability determination. One 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 for um, Steve Basanisi of one thirty one Oak Street concerning a uh, repair and replacement uh, of a septic system within one hundred foot of bordering vegetative wetland. And I believe, I presume, we have a representative of the applicant. We do. <laughs> and. Um, it says Brad Fitzgerald, so uh, we're going to try to get your map up on the screen. Okay. It's definitely a double click day. <laughs> there we go.
Um, how's that, Brad? I think that's pretty good. Thank you, Jennifer. This is Brad Fitzgerald from SFG Engineering, 28 Main Street in Lakeville. I'm the project engineer. Uh, this is an existing house with an existing uh, septic system in the backyard. It's kind of the dashed lines you'll see right in that area and a little bit to the northwest um, is the existing leaching field. So we're proposing to um, <clears throat> pump and remove as much of that field as is in the footprint of our new field. We're also going to um, install a new 1,500-gallon septic tank followed by a 1,000-gallon pump chamber. Um, they're both monolithic tanks, um, so there's no seam on them. Uh, and then we're, we're doing a field with um, the infiltrated quick four plus chambers in the backyard. We're kind of severely limiting this yard because the um, the uh, BBW is off to the northwest, right over against the property line there, and the, they're really using a lot more than what they actually own. You see the property line there where it says 150 feet. And you see the tree line that, that expands quite a bit over the line. So um, we are really locked into this location for the septic system. The, the good part is it is as far away from the BBW as we could get it. The leaching area itself will be about 85 feet. The uh, grade, grading for that will be to about 70 feet. And the uh, septic tank and pump chamber will be around 63 feet from the BBW. We do propose... Um, uh, erosion control or uh, sediment control um, along the left side of the house and along up along the back um, to contain any erosion that could be working its way toward the wetland. I did check with a contractor. He intends to access the site by coming up the driveway and going to the right around the right side of the house. Um, it may not show it there, but there's actually more, a little more asphalt to the southeast of what we're showing. So he says uh, he'll just access right in there like that. And um, he'll take out the old system, truck it away, and put in the new system and do his finished grading along the sea. And uh, as long as the homeowner can keep the water on it, we'll have a nice green area back there when they're done. Go. So this appears to be quite straightforward. Um, and are there any questions from members of the commission or Jen? I didn't have any questions now. And um, there is a comment about some um, possibly placing some markers at the, um, at the border of the wetland. At the edge of the property line over on the side where they're pretty close to the wetland. Okay. Yep. And and that, uh, Brad, that's been discussed with the homeowner? No, uh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. For this particular project, that's the first I've heard of it. Um, but I was on vacation last week, so um, I do know in other projects we have had to do that, and I just totally forgot about that. Um, I believe, uh, Jay, you yeah, have the yeah. uh, markers, correct? We provide the marker, yes. Yeah, and you just want a four by four post. Um, that should be adequate. Yes. Okay. I would let the installer know about that, and um, either he or I can get in there and pick up the the markers from you. I know he has done systems in the past where he's had to do that also. All right. Um, um, so any uh, questions from other que um, a question from other members of the commission? Uh, if not, um, anyone who has a question in the audience uh, in order to let us know, there are two ways. Uh, you can raise your hand, depending on the version of Zoom you have, on the reaction uh, uh, button, which has the raised hand at the bottom. And there's also um, an option in some versions on the participants list. Uh, and I do not see any hands raised. So if there's no further discussion, 
I think everything is in order and we can consider uh, a motion to close this hearing. Uh, motion, Mr. Chairman, to uh, close the public hearing. Motion made by Dan Pearson and seconded by? Uh, second. Second. Uh, seconded by Gene. Um, roll call vote, starting with Lisa and Ron. Aye. Aye. Gene and Dan Pearson. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye as well. Uh, motion passes. We're back in our regular meeting and we can consider a, uh, a motion as to whether this qualifies for a negative three, which means um, that assuming the project is uh, carried out according to plan, uh, no notice of intent is required. I'll make a motion to issue a, a negative three for file one, 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 one. Second. Motion made by Lisa, seconded by Dan Pearson. Again, the roll call vote, Lisa and Ron, how do you vote? Aye. And Gene and Dan Pearson? Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so our next item is a notice of intent, uh, file number 250-1077, Ferrari Pools, John Scott Boulevard. Um, the proposed project is to construct an in-ground pool with surrounding deck within 100 foot of a bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, do we have a, an applicant for that project or a representative of the applicant, I should say? Yes, my name is Stephen Balsevich. Uh, here on behalf of land planning, uh, representing Ferrari Pools and the residents of 14 John Scott Boulevard. Uh, Jen, we have, oh, yeah, I guess you're working yeah, on it. Wrong, wrong plan is there. It's just going to be a second. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let me know if you see the plan now. Uh, so far, it's the plan list. Okay. Number two. <laughs> you were close. Yeah, it just, you have to open it, close it, and then open it again. So it's just going to be two, two all night. It's like... All right, so we're there. Go ahead, Steve. All right, uh, so Stephen Balswitch again, um, design engineer on the project. Uh, the current residents of the property would like to propose a swimming pool as shown on the plan. Um, we've also integrated a uh, rain garden towards the west of the uh, swimming pool. Uh, the intent of the rain garden is to capture the uh, runoff from the full driveway up until the apron where it meets the road that pitches towards the road currently. Uh, there's kind of already an existing low spot where a lot of water already collects and settles. So uh, we're just going to be basically digging in a smaller hole in that area, depression, uh, trucking the material off site and bringing in adequate soil uh, for infiltration. Uh, we have a sediment barrier running around the entire project. Um, most of the pro project is within the uh, 100 foot buffer, 50 foot area. Um, there's no intent to change any uh, patio except remove a small rectangular section. It's about 107 square feet right there. Um, the whole um, grass area will be fenced in uh, and the pool will also be fenced in within that fence. Um, everything which exists lawn will stay lawn um, and the tree line uh, will not be removed. So we have no intentions of removing any trees or altering the tree line. Uh, I believe when this original house was permitted, that was uh, roughly the no disturbance zone and they took right up to it. So. Uh, our intention is just to leave that. There's minimal grading on site for the actual pool itself. And if, if there are any other questions I can address. I... Well, Steve, tell us where the wetlands are. Uh, so there's two wetlands on either side of the uh, yard. So there's one towards the east 
Uh, they're delineated uh, with a long dash, two small dashes, and then another long dash. And then there was another uh, smaller wetland. We didn't uh, delineate the full section for the property because it tapered away past those points. Uh, as you can see, I have dimensions from the edge of our delineated wetland to the closest structure or filled, you know, material. Um, and uh, we're pretty much staying outside of like 30 feet for the majority of the uh, major construction, I would say. Rare species habitat? Uh, to the south, um, that line has been um, scaled from Oliver Mass GIS data layers. Um, it was also shown on a previous plan signed by the planning board and approved. Um, so we felt that that line was sufficient enough to uh, delineate that area. And we uh, stayed outside of it about a foot, two feet with the uh, fence. It's just going to be a typical uh, chain link, four foot fence post every, I believe, six feet. So they'll just dig a hole and put a post in and that'll be it. <clears throat> All right. You had a, an email. Did you want to address the email? Uh, yeah. So some of the, uh, I have the list right here. Uh, one of them was regarding the topo. So every area we show the uh, contours is true to the current uh, topography. And it is actually the uh, state plane datum. So uh, that all reflects the current elevations of the site on state plane coordinates. Um, there was also a question about the rain garden. There was a small 79 contour where there was a break in the fence. Um, actually, now that I see this, I think there's another revision of this plan we had sent that connects uh, those two ends. Um, so one of the questions was about- you know, the, You got a reminder to send me the meeting materials for tonight. So if it wasn't resent, then- I believe there was another John Scott in the uh, list. It was the second one down markup that- that's just me drawing on your plan to color it up so people can see what it is. All right, I will check. I believe I sent an email uh, right after I revised it. Um, I will double check that, but the line has been uh, connected between those two areas. Uh, so the sediment fence goes fully around the site. Okay. I added uh, an additional note um, regarding the visual barrier. Um, that a visual barrier consisting of post and rail fence, the aluminum placard should be placed at the edge of the buffer zone and uh, state that it's a buffer zone, do not disturb. Um, there was also a comment regarding the street sweeping. Um, there's been a note uh, that states uh, the driver should be swept of material at the conclusion of each workday materials shall be removed by shovel and carefully removed to a uh, suitable disposal area where it will not be eroded. Tracking of material to the traveled way is prohibited. Um, we also had another question regarding the uh, sediment detail. Um, that detail we put on our plans is more of a, you know, catch all uh, detail that shows all the means of stabilization. We leave it up to the contractor to install and maintain as he sees fit. Um, we also added a note that stated that. Um, and then I believe the commission would prefer the uh, straw waddles not to be staked through. And uh, I put a note that the, they were not to be pierced by the stakes. They were simply to be uh, placed on the uphill side of the stakes so that they would not fall apart throughout, you know, the duration of their usage. Okay, and the old wetland permit that still needs to be closed out? Um, uh, the old, like when they built the house? Correct. I did not see any, I did not check that there was an outstanding order. That was an email that I sent to you about that. All right. I did not have that 
in this email. You talked to Cindy about that, I believe. I may have, I assume your office coordinates with different people emailing. Yeah, because I had an email from June 22nd. It just mentioned the uh, eight uh, bullet points, which I had addressed. Um, I could uh, have a conversation with her and see if she had another email that may have may have slipped through the cracks. Okay. So it sounds like there are a couple of loose ends that need to be squared away. Uh, although to my eye, pretty much, I mean, all of these have been addressed, but the, the, the revised plan and the issue of whether we can bring to a close the outstanding um, uh, open um, order of conditions um, getting that close with the COC. So what I'm leading up to is um, unless there are further discussion or questions from either members of the commission or the audience, uh, we can consider a motion to continue to our next meeting, uh, which is the 26th of July. And I'm assuming, um, Steve, that those items will be submitted and can be um, completed and then we can do um, uh, the orders on that? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm just checking. I believe I sent the revised plan. I, hmm. But I, I, I mean, we, I mean, there's going to be no change. I, we don't have an order of conditions tonight anyway. Uh, and if everything is squared away, we'll, we'll be acting on the order of conditions and issuing them on the okay. next. So, I have just have two quick questions. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, where's the equipment going to access? Which side? Uh, side of the property. It would, um, currently, there is no fence in the backyard, so they would most likely come down the driveway. Okay. Um, it is a paved driveway, um, so we're unable to utilize a, you know, construction entrance track pad. Uh, okay. But we felt that if, you know, construction equipment was coming in and out, it most sediment would remain in the length of the driveway. And then, as I stated, uh, we put a note on the most recent revision mm -hmm. that if anything should make it into the traveled way, it should be swept up immediately. There's not enough room to come in on the east side, Lisa. That's true. Yeah. Um, in terms of timing, when will the project be undertaken? Um, I believe they were interested in getting this done as soon as uh, all the uh, permits and orders of conditions have been, you know, addressed that as so as soon as possible. Okay, so it sounds like you'll be able to hit the fall uh, season for stabilization and replanting. So I assume there's a note somewhere on the plan that says, you know, all disturbed areas will be revegetated. Yep, uh, we have a, a section of sediment erosion control, and one of the notes within that is states that it should be loamed and seeded and you know, stabilized before any of the actual erosion control is removed. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. I do not see any hands up among the participants list. Um, so unless there are further questions, we can consider a motion for a continuation. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll make that motion to continue file 250-1077 to the July 26th meeting of the Conservation Commission. Second. Motion made by Dan Pearson, seconded by Lisa Carosi. Roll call vote. Start with Lisa and Ron. Aye. Aye. Gene and Dan Pearson. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So uh, the motion carries to continue uh, file number 250-1077 to July 26. So uh, Steve, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your time. You. Our, uh, next item. Uh, I'm not used to all of these uh, hearings that have, haven't been continued 14 times. So uh, <laughs> this is new and different. Um, so this is a uh, notice intent for which we don't have a file number yet, unless it came in today. Um, but for Jamie Smith, AZ Corporation, Wheaton College, 
uh, of 26 East Main Street concerning uh, proposed projects to install electrical condu conduits within 100 foot of bordering vegetated uh, wetland. And uh, we have a representative of the project. If you could just uh, announce your name and give us a summary. Good evening. My name is Bruce Ringwall from GPI, representing AZ Corporation uh, for Wheaton College. Um, <clears throat> Jim, do you want to put the plans up or do you want me to do it? And how do you want to do that? Oh, I already made you a co host, so you can fire with me. Okay. Let me uh, bring the plan up. Okay. Is that visible for you folks? It is. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> Starting with uh, Wheaton College here, uh, Pine Street, uh, there is a series of fields. Uh, this is a Marion Stadium and Norton Field. And there is a travel path, a walking path with a, a bridge over the intermittent stream here. Um, there is an announcement booth on uh, Marion Stadium. And there's an electrical booth over here on um, Norton Field. And the college, because of its rating, needs to have uh, filming of the games. And this is a division requirement. Uh, so as I pull back over here into, oops, let's hope it slides. Zoom out just a little bit. That work okay? Because sometimes, uh, good. <clears throat> so, um, trying to get it. Pardon me while I play with my mouse just a little bit to get it so I can see the whole image there. All right. So there's uh, this is the um, announcement booth at the stadium, and there's an electrical um, transformer box over here on uh, Norton Field. There's an existing walk path that comes in through here and a series of paths. There's an existing bridge over that. Um, they need to they have conduit around both fields already, but they need to connect these two together so that uh, they can do the, the work that's required. Um, we have proposed uh, erosion control in the line of uh, silt fence to be installed along the edge, right up to the edge of the um, pedestrian bridge, and then picking up at the other end of the pedestrian bridge and, and coming across on, on the back side here. The wetlands have been delineated in here with the blue line on either the north and the south side. And we did do a top of a high water mark on the intermittent stream and through here, and those are these flags in here. The yellow line is your 25 foot no disturb, and the green line is the edge of the 100 foot buffers. <clears throat> I'm going to try to zoom in here without making too much of a mess. So you can see that there's uh, a set of dashed lines here that are the existing trails that go through, and then the bridge itself, and they will be putting in the desire to put in two electrical conduits to run the cables through for um, the cameras. And when they get to the bridge, they would use uh, conduit uh, hardware that would just bolt onto the side of the bridge and then could go back into trenching on the other side. And again, the erosion controls on the down gradient side of, of that for that. And then we're back out into the field and going along the side of the trail um, right up to uh, the last box over here. Uh, it should be a short period of time for them to do this work. Um, there'll be the two electrical conduits. They'll be buried roughly 18 inches. They'll have uh, the required uh, magnetic uh, tape and warning tape on the top of the conduits. We have a detail on the plan that shows that. We will roam and seed all the uh, line areas upon completion. 
and um, put mulch down on the areas along the side of the trail, uh, natural leaf litter, um, which is what is in there along the sides of the trails right now. Um, fairly straightforward um, for what is necessary to do here, kind of the details on the, here for the silt fence, have uh, a detail for trenching, and we have notes on there for um, the uh, mulch and the loam and seed of the disturbed areas. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Yeah, we just need a file number. I didn't have any other comments on the project. Yeah, we checked as late as later this afternoon and you know, we all know how that situation is going. It was slow before the pandemic. It's gotten much slower since and throughout it, so. Um, but we will email out to them in hopes of having one prior to your meeting for the 26th. All right. Um, so uh, unless there, I don't see any hands up on the participants list. So unless- yes, I do have a question, Julian. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so do you have a, uh, is there an attachment detail? Attachment detail for? To the bridge. To, to alert the contractor that it has to be attached? Are you creating a detail for them? Uh, no, it's a, it's basic hardware that you can you can get it built. Most uh, uh, supply stores, it basically bolts onto the side of the bridge and they have that hardware because they do this work all the time. Okay, so they, they have directions as to whether it's going on the underside or the side. I mean, it, it the, the plans are explicit enough to allow the contractor to put it where you want it. Yes, that is correct. And um, I have a photo, if you like, I can show you the bridge. Um, basically, it would be mounted to the underside of the wood. Um, it is a bridge that's done with a, a steel truss underneath it. And so then it has a, a wood frame and then the wood decking. So how do they access that as they're uh, attaching it? Do they do it from the bridge itself? Uh, from the bridge or standing along the side of it. It's basically just uh, with a a cordless drill gun screwing in uh, probably two screws per bracket, and then the uh, conduit just clips into it. Okay, well, as long as there's enough detail for them to know it's either the, the underside or the side, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, no, it'll be on the underside so that it's uh, not a, an, an attractive nuisance to uh, okay. students or anybody walking through the area. Okay, thank you. You got all right, so uh, unless there are further questions from the audience or members of the commission, and once again, I don't see any hands up, um, we can consider a motion to continue this until um, uh, July 26th, at which time we should have the file number, which should allow us to close and issue um, an order of conditions at that time. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue file 250 dash. I'm sorry, do we have a file number? No, we don't. That's the uh, <laughs> dash quadruple X uh, uh, to the um, July 26th meeting of the Conservation Commission. Motion made by Dan Pearson and seconded by? Second. Second. Uh, Say by Jean. So roll call vote starting with Lisa and Ron. Aye. And then Jean and Dan Pearson. Uh, aye. And then myself, I'll throw in an aye. So uh, thank you. You have a Dan, uh, one quick question, if I may. Yeah. Um, assuming that we get the DEP number prior to the next meeting, uh, do you need us in attendance or are you all set? I don't think we do. Thank you very much. You folks have a great evening. And uh, hopefully a dryer tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for coming in. Uh, All right. So our next uh, item is um, request for determination of applicability determination 1109 for Massachusetts Coastal Railroad concerning uh, Massachusetts Coastal Railroad right of way. Um, continued multiple times, multiple times, most recently on the 28th of. June, and um, it's looking like uh, all the data we need is is in. Um, 
Maybe. The long-awaited page one has been received. You can close. All right. Um, and then, uh, so no further information or discussion is needed. We just need to entertain a motion. All right. So uh, I'll look for that motion to close uh, determination number 1109. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Gene and seconded by? Second. Uh, seconded by Ron. So um, again, roll call vote. We'll start with Ron and Gene. Aye. Aye. And Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. And uh, this is a little bit complicated because of all of the items. It looks like it'll be a, uh, a motion uh, containing a positive 2A indicating boundary delineations are accurate, a negative two, uh, indicating the work is within resource area but won't alter, uh, so no uh, notice and dents required, and a negative three, uh, work is in the buffer zone but won't alter the resource area, so no uh, notice and dents is required. So uh, we can consider such a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Gene and seconded by? Second. Second by Ron. Uh, roll call vote. Let's we'll start with Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. Um, and um, I guess, Tom, you're the representative and uh, you'll be receiving that in the mail. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. You bet. Our next item is uh, notice of intent file number 250-1070. Oh, that was 1077. Okay, 1070 uh, White Act Share Corporation concerning zero rear 80 Street. Um, continued multiple times. Um, and project involves construction of a common driveway with associated stormwater management, septic system, utility, retaining walls, and grading the four duplex units. Um, it looks like they are requesting a continuance. Don't have any additional information. Um, then I didn't think July 26 was going to be long enough since we don't have revised plans or anything, but that's the date they requested. Okay. So I'll make the motion to continue the public hearing. Is it 1070? Correct. 1070. Uh, for 1070 to the July 26th public hearing. Second. Motion made by Lisa, seconded by Dan Pearson. Roll call vote, starting with Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And then Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So uh, that um, file 250 1070 is continued till July 26. Um, so we have. I don't have that issue in my that order in my packet. Is that something I missed? Was it sent electronically? You don't have a what? Well, it says sign an issue order of conditions. Oh, I guess we just don't have any. Um, yeah, but we do have a request for an extension for file number uh, DP 250-968 for Bill Braden, Taunton Avenue. Uh, I'm assuming this is not complicated and we don't uh, need any discussion or, or not? Nope, just need an extension. Okay. Uh, what are they looking for? A year? One year. He didn't specify, so I put one. Okay. I'll make a motion to issue a one-year extension for file 250-968. Second. Motion made by Lisa, seconded by Ron. Uh, a uh, roll call vote. Uh, we'll start with Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And then Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the extension for file number DEP 250-968 passes. All right. And then our next item is request for a partial slash full certificate of compliance. Full certificate of compliance for DEP file number 250 0988 uh, amended order of condition for uh, Lucas uh, Waziak 183 Taunton Avenue. 
Uh, I think this has been before us previously. Yeah, the last meeting I didn't have the time to do the inspection. So the inspection has been completed and it looks like everything is done according to the plan. So you can issue a full. All right. I'll make a motion to issue a full certificate of compliance for file 250-0988. Uh, second. Uh, motion made by Lisa, seconded by Dan Pearson. Uh, roll call vote. We'll start with Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the uh, full COC for file number 250-988. Passes. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. All right. We have two um, draft minutes. Um, June 28th, regular meeting. June 28th, executive session. Um, I didn't find anything. I felt needed to be changed. Anybody else have comments, questions, corrections? Um, possibly. Uh, in the uh, um, on page one, halfway down, motion was made to allow non conserve non conservation commission members speak. Maybe two speak, but then again, since it's just notes, it's not, not that big a deal. Um, Likewise, on page two, uh, second paragraph down. Uh, you must you must be on the executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, I I guess I am. I okay. jumped the gun. Uh, we're on the regular minutes. You can do either. Um. Yeah, at the bottom you could change ma 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 or. No big deal. Really not a big deal. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Thinking, I'll be so glad to get away from this. You need to send them to me because I don't have them in front of me and we no longer have a secretary. So if you're okay, okay. all right, I will to mark it up and send it. I, I will, uh, I will send it. Thank you. Sure. Any further comments, questions, corrections? Uh, and if not, we'll do them in separate uh, motions. So I think we can entertain a motion for the minutes of the regular meeting on June 28th. I'll make that motion. Second. And uh, we have motion made by Dan Pearson, seconded by Lisa, um, for approving the minutes of June 28th on regular session as corrected. Um, uh, so again, we'll call vote, uh, starting with Ron and Jean. Vote, uh, aye. I abstain. Ah, uh, yes, you uh, you weren't there. Uh, and then Dan and aye. Lisa. Aye. And I'll throw in an eye. And then, uh, so it brings us to the minutes of the executive session uh, with the correction of, um, well, I don't know. I mean, it's grammatically correct as that sentence is written. Uh, well, all right. So that, which yeah, I guess I, I guess you have to throw in a make them in, an infinitive, uh, so to attend to speak. I mean, it, it, it's notes. So anyway, but we do we are we are checking them, uh, and on page two, second paragraph down, um, where it says commissions. I think, I mean plural commissions. We mean. Uh, um, commissions with a possessive with an apostrophe S. Um, anyway, so I will send these. Thank you. All right, and again, off, which I'm not even going to bother with. All right, and so we can consider a motion on the um, 
uh, minutes as submitted and, and corrected. I'll make that motion to approve the executive session uh, meeting minutes of June 28th. Second. Uh, motion made by Lisa, seconded by Dan. A roll call vote starting with Ron and Jean. Aye. Stain. And then uh, Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. Um, next item on the agenda is may, new business. Uh, may, I, may I ask a quick question? Um, who seconded it? Who, excuse me, who seconded my motion to accept regular minutes? Lisa. Okay, thanks. That's what I thought. All right. Um, so we have a rail trail easement letter. Um, anything to discuss there? Um, Mike's been on vacation, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it yet. Okay. And then we have special town meeting August 9th, which is going to obligate us to reschedule August 9th. Right. Um, so we can't do it. Um, um, I'd have to. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we should. Uh, so you could meet on the 16th and the 30th if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Um, and then September, we're not going to meet on the 6th. So again, it would be the 13th and 27th. So I think that would work with September. Yep. And then October, they just called a special uh, town meeting for the October 25th. You would normally meet on the 11th and the 25th. So you so, could just meet on the 18th if you want. Because our next, our meeting in September would be the 26th. And so that makes the fourth just a week away. So yeah, it looks like that's how it would work. So October 18th will be your other, your other meeting. Is that more than, that's not more than 21 days, is it? I don't think so. It may be exactly 21 days. So then you have that come up a, a few times where that's when I let you know, if you close anything, <laughs> you it have to is, blah, blah, blah. So it, it is exactly 21 days. So yeah. yeah. Um, just ask people to just continue to that next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll still have conditions ready. Maybe next. They're not. They're losing a day. Losing. Yeah. So it's August 9th, sixteenth. No, it's just it's August sixteenth and thirtieth, and then September thirteenth and twenty seventh, and then October eighteenth. Correct. Okay. Not that you care. Of course, I care. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I would be writing it down and help you figure it out. <laughs> you care for this moment. Okay, it's all right. Help me, Dan. Help me. Help me get over the bitterness, Dan. I, you know, I, I, I. I in, in the letter Dan is about to read, I suggested that. Horton and New Bedford are the two most important towns in the Bristol and Plymouth County areas uh, because we have wheat and New Bedford has whaling stuff. Uh, does that not convince her to stay? <laughs> and uh, I, I'm guessing that it doesn't. Uh, we also have the Norton House of Pisa, I might add, uh, which Easton can possibly. <laughs> Have. And, um, I don't think it's vegan pizza, so you're not making. Oh, it. that's right. You know, well, that's yeah. it, was a, it was a bad, bad one, Dan. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, the last thing on your agenda is just to reorganize. Um, Go back to the beginning of the agenda. Uh, 
the staff. Yeah, yeah. Are, are we are we disorganized? No. Usually in July you pick a new president, uh, whatever you are, chairman, vice chair. Um, yeah, so Dan, you want to be chair? Who are you asking, Julie? <laughs> I, I said Dan. 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 Me? <laughs> no. I'm, uh, that would be, I, I would be happy to. I mean, if it were just grunt work, but I am the, I'm the weak link, to be quite honest. My, my strength is that I, I have the greatest attendance record. Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> Well, Julia, get, get a, you find you have a little more time on your hands to be chair, or no? Uh, I, I, I will be, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. What happened to Scott Allerhead? Why can't we get him back, or Dave Andrews, or somebody? I don't know. This is depressing. I, I'll, I'll do it. I, I, I mean, as is my want, I'm involved with like 14 different projects, and and so I'm being pulled apart, uh, pulled. Um, by multiple different things, but yeah. but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly have no problem continuing to be chair, just as I'm assuming you'll have no um, problem being vice chair. Um, yeah. Now, now, at least I don't suppose you want to take an enormous pay cut and work for the town of Norton. <laughs> You're qualified. <laughs> You're, yeah, it would. Yeah. Be, you would be the uh, it's. The uh, you know you, you would be even better than the ghost of Rachel Carson, which is my was my first my first thought for replacing Jen. You know we could. Uh, um, you know Dan, if I was closer to retirement and I could afford it, I would. But it, it would be substantial. Gotten big. <laughs> so and just so you understand the. Um, uh, conflict of interest law would have any commission member would need to resign for a full year before you could be an employee. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so so but I'll be retiring maybe 11 years, Dan. So in 10 years, right? <laughs> so we can revisit that. <laughs> Dan, by that time. Joking, joking, God, I would be happy to do more ad administrative i mean i would be happy to be chair but i really think that just anyone else would make a, a a better chair than i unless you want me to write stuff you know i heard dan wants to take minutes <laughs> that's what i heard too <laughs> yeah all right yeah I, I started to take minutes but uh tonight but we'll see i don't know okay all right well uh somebody's gonna have to show us how to open up uh, zoom and re do the recording and all that so of course uh um so i don't have i don't hear a motion yet <laughs> uh, i mr chairman i'd like to make a motion to prevent uh <laughs> oh, conservation director carlino from leaving ever and <laughs> if she does i would like to make a motion to uh be at war with the town of easton uh, is that uh, possible? But, uh, I, I, you, you know we we have certain limited powers you might have exceeded them <laughs> Dan, I, the first question I asked is, do you have to be a resident of Easton to be on the commission? I mean, not there that you I want to be on the commission mm -hmm. in Easton, but, you know, how does it work? I don't know. All right. Well, let's bring this to a, 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 a close. So can we wrap uh, uh, chair and vice chair into one, one uh, yes. motion? Yes. Well, let's do it. One motion is good. All right. So we need a motion. Please. Self-serving if I make a motion for myself. I would like to make a, a proposed motion uh, to have uh, our distinguished Julian Kadish uh, as uh, the next chairman and the distinguished Lisa Carrozza as the uh, vice chair person. Second. All right, we have a motion. Uh, 
made by Dan Pierce and seconded by Ron um, for keeping the existing. Oh, should uh, we wait for Carrie? Is Carrie interested? Uh, that I don't know. She. Um, it, All right. We'll have to ask her next meeting and then we can read it. <laughs> We'll take another vote next time. Okay. Uh, All right. So we'll go with a we'll, we'll go with a roll call vote starting with Ron and Jean. Aye. Aye. And Dan Pearson and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I will throw in an aye. And I think that is our last item on the agenda. Um, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I I would to propose a serious uh, another serious motion this time. Uh, I don't know if this is how it's done, but I would like to uh, propose a motion uh, the highest, uh, giving our con current conservation director the possible commendation we can in a motion for her excellent uh, over two decades of service. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can certainly draw up a letter of appreciation. Well, you know what? I would like to make a motion that we should rename Edith Reed. Second. To Carlino what? Come up with something alliterative, Dan. Uh, Carlino something? I'll, I will find something. I'm serious. In, I, I know. I will find okay. something in some language that we can. Uh, okay. Can, can, oh. I would like to make a motion that we make a, we write a letter to, who would it go to? The town manager? No, it's your um, property. You can do whatever name you oh. want. Okay. Oh, okay. With yeah, I think we're going to have to um, find a spot, uh, and and I I don't know the history of Edith Reed, so and it's already there, and I don't know if we can rename that, but there, well, yeah, we bought it though. I, I mean, I kept Edith Reed just because I like keeping some of the old names, and I still call it Great Woods. Mm. Um, no. We'll have to find something. But the, the management of conservation property rules and regulations for use of conservation property and you know naming property and trails or anything like that is up to you. It's your it's your property. You're the manager. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You don't need to ask permission from anyone. You just need to decide as a group. And we certainly don't have to ask permission to compose a, a, a letter of appreciation <laughs> for your service. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's very sweet. And it's all of you who've kept me here for so long. So thank you. All right. So do we, um, and, and Dan, as the, um, as the, the pro tem secretary, <laughs> do, do you want to compose that letter and then we'll edit it? I would be delighted and honored. To. Um, all right. Okay, so I think we're ready for a, a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And uh, I'll, I'll second, second that. All right. Okay, we, we have uh, uh, simultaneous seconds. Made the motion made by Ron, seconded by both Gene and Dan Pearson. And uh, as is our now tradition on Zoom, we're going to do a thumbs up for our vote. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, just a quick pro forma question. Can we discuss this letter outside of uh, the meeting, this letter that I'm writing? Yes. It, okay. It does not involve any any applicants, so yeah, we're not going to uh, break the tenets of the open meeting law there. Okay. Super. Better if you don't reply all and do it all. all in right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, um, and thanks, people. So, and good luck, Jennifer, in the future. Thank you. Good luck, good luck Jennifer. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. And, and we're going to be in touch about other items, but that's that's another um, issue. Yeah. All right. Thank you.